So welcome to another live coding session. So this is a task which I found on one of the freelancing sites and uh, the task is very simple. You need to go to this site and extract this information. So here is the site and the good thing about this site is that all the schools are listed on one single page. So there is no pagination, it saves us one step and when we click on any of the school, it goes to a new page where all the required information is available. Now first of all, before we proceed, we need to determine whether the page is static or generated by JavaScript. So just press F12 to bring up the developer toolbox and go to network tab. Ensure that disable cache is checked and press Ctrl Shift P. Now this will bring up the command palette. Type disable JavaScript and then reload the page. So now the JavaScript is disabled and you don't see any content here. So that means that this page is generated using JavaScript. So we need to handle JavaScript in some way. So let's again enable the JavaScript and reload the page. So let's see what happens. So now the page is loaded and now let's go to XHR. XHR stands for XML HTTP request. So without going into details, just consider that there is a separate request sent to the server. So there is settings. So if we click on preview, we can see what was the information that was received and then get all school. Now this looks interesting. So this, let's look at the response tab and we can see that this is a JSON request. So this is very good because now we don't have to go to this page at all. We are not concerned with how this information is presented here. We will not be concerned with how to create CSS or XPath selectors. We, don't, we directly have access to this JSON, the real data. Now what happens when we click on any of the school? If we click on any of the school, we can see that a new request is made, which is again an XHR request. And we can see that this school code was passed. And here we have all the data related to the school. So again, we are not at all concerned with how this information is presented. We already have the data. So in the beginning, this may sound more complex, but actually it is very good. We don't have to deal with any of the presentation logic. We directly have access to data. So now what about this school code? How do we get the school code? So if we look at the previous request, we can see that this is IT school code and IT school code is here. So from the first request, we will take this IT school code and we will get the next URL. We can construct it very easily. We can pass on this parameter. One more thing that we need to examine is what were the headers that were sent. So let's click on headers. So the first thing is it is a get request. We have the request URL and in the request header, you can see that this is application slash JSON. So whenever there is a request to the server to get JSON, the accept header is set like that. So this is what we have to do in our code. The second thing to note here is there is a cookie being passed. So if there is a cookie which is being passed, then that means that we need to do something about it. Now, Scrappy will by default handle cookies, but it has to receive the cookie at the first place. So how will we ensure that the cookie is received? Very simple. Instead of starting our 
scrapper with this particular URL, what we will do is we will start with this page. So let's generate one spider scrappy gen spider anti schools dot anti schools and we have to supply the fourth parameter as the start URL. But if you have been following along my previous videos, you know that Scrappy is usually not good. So we have to manually update the URL anyway. So I'm just typing anything and we will take care of it. So code and schools. So this will open the this Python file in Visual Studio Code. We have the structure ready. And these are the two things that we need to take care first. So let's copy this URL. And this is going to be our start URL. A reminder that if you have gone through my free course, all the videos, this is a fairly easy task to be done. So I'm going to remove allowed domains, not required. And the start URL, I'm just copying pasting this first URL that we will be starting with. In the parse method, we are going to call this. So let's copy the link address. URL that we will be calling is this. Very simple. And if you remember that when we were looking at this request, there are certain headers to be passed. Uh, let's collapse response headers, not important. Request headers. So this is the most important one. Application JSON. Cookie will be handled automatically. And a user agent is also something we should provide. So I'm going to take a shortcut to save the time. These headers. I copied these headers and created a dictionary. So I'm going to paste it here. And you can see that it's simply a copy. What we have to do is we have to create a new request. So a request is going to be scrappy dot request is going to take the URL. A callback method that we still have to create. So let's call it parse API. And then we have to pass the headers. So this is self dot headers. And finally, we have to yield this request. Here is our parse API self and response standard signature for all callback. I'm just going to write pass. We can of course take a shortcut and we can directly yield this. It's fine. Remember that whenever we are processing a JSON request, say this is a JSON request. Now here we will not be dealing with CSS selector or XPath selectors. Now Python already has one inbuilt module, but we need to call it. We need to import it. So import JSON response dot body is we need to convert this string into a JSON object. So let's call it a raw data. So this is our raw data and let's call it data. Now the JSON library or the JSON module has one function called load and loads. So here we are talking about loads. So load is different and out of the context right now. And notice that the first argument is the string. So what is the string that we have? Raw data. So if we look at the type, it will be a string. And if we look at this, this will be a JSON object. So now we have the JSON object. And what is this JSON object? So now if you look at it, it is a list. If we consider it as a list, we can run a loop over it. So let's write a for loop. So for school and data. At this point, we are only interested in this, the school code. So I'm just going to copy it. And the school code is data like that. So this will return us the value of IT school code. 
and that's all we need to create the next request so this is the next url right click copy copy link address let me let's call it base url and i'm going to remove this part uh, okay there is one goof up that i did it has to be school because we are dealing with a list we are running a loop so for each item we will have it school code so we can take this combine with this so let's call it school url and this is going to be school code plus rather base url plus school code we have to create a request so we have to create a request scrappy dot request and school url callback we will create it later let's call it parse school and again this is a json request so we have to pass the headers and finally we have to yield this and we need to create we are on this page again we have the json so let's copy these lines so again response dot body will have raw data and we'll have to call json dot loads to convert it into json data so we need to get the name and where is the name it's here this is the name of the school so data name a physical address and postal address is sort of nested dictionary let's call it physical address let's call it one and this will be this is the physical address so this will be data physical address and the part one description display address is the only field that we need we don't need anything else so again the same thing will be with postal address so postal address paste it here paste it here and done let's make it pretty ensure that there is a comma awesome so we have the postal address what other information that we need is email where is email here this is the email so email is again data okay is there anything else that we need we need the phone number where is the phone number so we need the phone number of the school this is here it is so phone is going to be data and school management again we have two things so that also i'm sure you can do this so i'm just going to stop here and see if my spider has any error so let's come to the command prompt so run spider scrappy run spider i'm going to run it just to see that if there is any error i'll correct it no errors i'm just going to press ctrl c to stop it right now and let's send this output all schools dot csv and the switch is o not zero o so i'm going to run it i'm sure it's not going to take long because there are not many records to process awesome let's look at item scrap count here it is so 208 schools they have been processed we don't see any errors 
so here is the csv file so we have the name physical address postal address email and phone number and all 208 schools and let me look at the real recording time it took me less than 25 minutes i'm going to edit a little bit hundred dollars is very easy 100 150 200 depending on how much you can bargain done not bad for half an hour see you in the next video